and that we are being pulled into a well of transformative intentionality. History is not pushed by the casuistry of war, migration, uh, imperial dynastic families and stuff like that. History is pulled toward an unimaginable something which is continuously trying to mirror itself in us. This is why these Egyptians say it, you know, I don't know what it is, but I just think we should really build a big simple building. They say, I, I don't know why, but I'm going to enslave 50,000 people and do it, and don't ask me why. And this is, and, you know, this is the same force that reared Chart Cathedral. This is the same force that created the space shuttle. We are in a relationship to an unseen something which we keep trying to image with our mythologies, our religions, our technologies, our epiphanies. And I think that uh, it's not so far away. That it, do it isn't 10,000 years in the future. It is sometime in the next 50 years and that this is what history was for. You see, history is an incredibly peculiar and brief phenomenon. I mean, viewed from the point of view of biology, it's less time than it takes for a new species to emerge. I mean, let's call history 25,000 years. You know, in, in frame one, you're chipping flint. In frame two, you're hurling an instrument toward Alpha Centauri like that this happened well what's happening it's that mind itself is being pulled out of this creature and it's being given hands and languages and post symbolic systems in order to image the unspeakable the unspeakable i call it the transcendental object at the end of time it casts and it's in another dimension it's in a kind of super space and what it casts into history is the enormous shadow of its eminence. This is what straight people call God. This is what all these visionaries are raving about. It's that when you sink the nose beneath the surface of ordinary causality and mundane ho humism what you discover is this enormous transcendental object, which you could call it, you know, the sacred heart of Jesus or the flying saucer or the philosopher's stone it's all of those things and much much more it's not only stranger than you suppose it's stranger than you can suppose and it has called us out of animal organization over a 25,000 year period we hang in the balance and then we meet it and we're going to meet it that's the light at the end of that birth canal of transcendence that I referred to. And now I see that our song is sung, our time is done. based on a philosophy called Hermeticism that was developed in the first and second centuries by Gnostic thinkers, Greeks, Jews, people inside the Roman Empire as it was beginning to show the first signs of degradation and decay, who felt a profound disaffection with their world. A disaffection that on the scale of those times was as profound as our own existential disaffection and the hermetic philosophers drew back from the rise of Christianity with its doctrine of the fall of man and original sin and the stain of Adam and Eve and that whole thing and took a different tack and made two points which I think we need to recover and live out for ourselves and the first point was that Man, men and women, human beings, are divine beings, not lower than the angels, higher than the angels. The message 
of the alchemical and hermetic thinkers and the corpus hermeticum actually uses the phrase man is God's brother we have no idea what it would mean in our own lives if we could throw off the notion of ourselves as fallen beings we are not fallen beings when you take into your life the gnosis of the light-filled vegetables, the psychedelic plants that have stabilized the same societies of this world for millennia, the first message that comes to you is you are a divine being. You matter. You count. You come from realms of unimaginable power and light and you will return to those realms. Culture, uh, the whole thing is that culture and language tend to become traps and yet they can be the platforms for enormous freedom if you understand what it's all about. And what it's all about is you. You are the center of the mandala. You are not uh, marginalized in any way and the message that the culture gives us is that we are marginal it doesn't matter whether you, if you've got a hundred million dollars the fortune magazine will inform you that so do ten thousand other people on the North American continent there's nothing special about you it's and so we are constantly this is part of the democratic legacy we are constantly told you're not special special isn't special anybody could do it what the psychedelic and so then when you look for guidance direction mentorship we always look toward institutions well i'll go to the university or i'll go to the army or i'll do something somebody will tell me will give me a larger purpose but it's really yourself that is uh, the final arbiter and if you keep yourself as the final arbiter you will be less susceptible to infection by cultural illusion now the problem with this is that it makes you feel bad to not be infected by cultural illusion because it's called alienation you know but this is i, I can't solve all problems the reason we feel alienated is because the society is infantile trivial and 